This video is going to be about gamma correction and how it applies to texture painting in Modo. So um, I'm just going to explain the very basics first. Uh, your computer is hardwired with a gamma correction curve, like a color correction curve. So this is the curves palette in Photoshop and essentially your computer is doing something a little bit like this. Your computer monitor is applying this kind of curve to every single image it displays. So um, in order to compensate for this, um, all the 8-bit color images that uh, that you use, so every photo, every image out of Photoshop, everything on the internet, basically your entire system is uh, gamma corrected with a compensation curve, which means that they've got a correction curve, a bit like this, built in to every single image. It's essentially baked into every single 8-bit non-HDR image. Um, and uh, there's no way of removing this this uh, curve, it's part of the color profile. So, uh, how does this affect Modo? Well, Modo um, uses a linear workflow, as in when it's rendering, the renderer does not apply any kind of gamma correction. It's just a straight line, it's what's known as a linear workflow. So, the drawback is that when you bring in a uh, gamma corrected image like a standard JPEG say you've downloaded an image a bit like this from the internet and uh, you try and use this in Modo it's not going to display correctly and I'm going to explain why so if I bring this image into Modo you can see that in the OpenGL uh, viewport it's displaying correctly and that is because the OpenGL viewport is set up essentially to display images just like the rest of your system with a gamma of 2.2 but you can see in the render preview it looks washed out and the reason it looks washed out is because unlike the OpenGL viewport the render is working in linear space which means essentially um, because your final color output is set to 2.2 which is the default um, the gamma curve is being applied twice um, once because it's baked into the file itself and a second time as it's rendered out which is essentially what's happening here in the in the render preview so if I was to set the output gamma back to 1 then everything gets really dark but the texture looks good well in most cases you are gonna unless you're working with a linear workflow you are going to have your output gamma at 2.2 so what you need to do is to compensate the other way, which is to select your texture and remove the uh, baked-in um, gamma curve, the gamma compensation. So you do this by uh, dividing the default gamma of 1 by the baked-in gamma of 2.2, and that gives you the correct gamma display. So although it sounds complicated because there's this sort of extra step you've got to do which is to de-gamma uh, the textures you bring in, the benefit of this workflow is that it does actually simplify things. It means that your OpenGL view matches the view you would have in Photoshop, for instance. Uh, there isn't a disconnect because the gamma correction is applied by default in Photoshop. There's no way of turning that off. Um, so OpenGL in Modo behaves the same way. Um, your textures will look the same. So it means there's a lot of compatibility also when you, if you export your textures to do some further work in Photoshop, they're going to display the same. Um, if you bring in textures from ZBrush, they're going to display the same. So in many ways it's really simple because it just means that you have compatibility across your system and as long as you remember to degamma your textures in the shader tree, you're not going to run into any surprises. Everything is going to be predictable. The drawback is that this also applies for any textures you create from scratch because for them to display correctly in OpenGL um, OpenGL is assuming that they're like every other texture they have this uh, gamma of 2.2 uh, baked in so when you create a transparent PNG from scratch and just start painting on it in Modo you have to assign this gamma this inverse gamma of uh, 0 0.4 Five, four, six, in order for it to display correctly in OpenGL and therefore then to render correctly whatever your output gamma is going to be. So this is just something you need to remember. Now in Modo it is possible to work in a linear fashion. There's some uh, preferences uh, in system preferences. If you go to final rendering you can uh, set your default output gamma and you can uh, also set your display gamma uh, but the display gamma only applies to renders it does not apply to the OpenGL viewport so what this means is that your OpenGL is essentially hardwired to the 
to gamma. Um, you cannot work in a linear fashion with texture painting. Or you can, but it's not going to display correctly, so you don't really want to go there. So even if you are creating textures from scratch that are only ever going to be used inside a modo, if you want your OpenGL view to reflect what your render is, whatever the final uh, gamma output is, your OpenGL viewport is assuming that all your textures are gamma corrected at 2.2 so that means that even if you create a brand new transparent PNG you are going to have to um, when it's first created it will come in with a gamma of 1 you are going to have to divide that with 2.2 in order for OpenGL to look correct you can then if you wish um, have a final output gamma of 1 that's absolutely fine and that for compositing further down the road but you simply cannot work in 1.0 space in OpenGL. So hopefully that's uh, explained the main issues and thank you very much for watching.